Good morning. Good afternoon. And good evening. This is how money works, Masterclass, Part 1. This is where you'll learn to stop being a sucker when it comes to your money. I'm Michael Eisbrenner, and I'll be your financial educator for the next 30 minutes or so. Financial literacy starts here. You have to face the facts as we know them before you begin this process. Our goal isn't to give you a PhD in finance, but to teach you the basics that you'll need to know to make smarter decisions about your money and wealth. This is that foundation. You'll also get to know the cast of characters from the How Money Works Stop Being a Sucker book. If you've read the book, you've already been introduced. Everyone has a favorite or two. Mine is George. They're proof that there are no stupid questions when it comes to money. Please feel free to make notes in your book. <clears throat> the first choice you have as we begin this course is simple. Will you choose the mindset of a sucker or will you learn to think like the wealthy? It's a choice. The fact that you've joined the class today is a sign that you're on the right track. Here's the great news. You don't have to be wealthy to think like the wealthy. You only need knowledge. This is your opportunity to gain that knowledge and mindset. One of our country's founders, Benjamin Franklin, once said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. We salute you for taking the time to learn one of the most valuable life skills you can develop. You're going to, you're going to be glad you did. The comedian W.C. Fields once said, it's morally wrong to allow a sucker to keep their money. Of course he was kidding. It does, however, prove one thing. If you don't understand how money works, you can end up as the butt of someone's joke. For you, that stops today. You know the word sucker sounds insulting. Unfortunately, that's the best way to describe someone who can be taken advantage of because they don't know how things work. Not knowing how money works does suck. It can suck up your time, suck up your freedom, and even suck up your income. And that sucks. There's an old saying, what we think about, we bring about. Your financial reality will largely depend on how your mind works when it comes to money. Today's class, Masterclass Part 1, will cover these five basic concepts and strategies. Each is essential to the foundation required to start making financial decisions with confidence and start taking action to get yourself on track. Today, we all know how devastating a global medical crisis can be. Not knowing about money is the economic version of a global crisis, and it affects over 5 billion people in the world who are considered illiterate when it comes to their money. The financial devastation it has caused to individuals all over the world is immeasurable, and some of it is intentional. The financial industry won't be happy that we're committed to creating financial literacy is a thing of the past. If this was 1920, there would still be millions of adults in the United States who couldn't read. Publication, public education over the last hundred years changed that. The How Money Works Masterclass is public education and financial literacy. With this course, you will learn the building blocks to earn, spend, save, and invest. Just like learning to read, when you know how money really works, it changes how your financial story ends. When you heard me say over 5 billion people in the world are considered financially illiterate, you probably wondered what does that mean. It references the shocking result of a recent global study. In the study, only 30% of the world are considered financially illiterate. The study used a simple money quiz to reveal that the vast majority of people from countries all over the world were unable to correctly answer a few simple questions about money. This class will teach you the answers to those questions and many more. It's the reason I teach this course and hopefully it's why you're here. The United States isn't any better off than the rest of the world financially. Financial literacy is our top economic crisis. Look at these numbers. Can you believe that almost half of Americans don't have enough to cover a $400 emergency 
or to make their student loan payments, or to pay off their credit cards, or even consider retiring. Sarah's right. How numbers hurt families every day is hard to process. In early 2020, with the number of people on unemployment, the stock market being volatile, and so many people impacted, I'm sure the numbers are even worse. But here's the good news. You and everyone who takes this course with knowledge and action can make changes and change these numbers. The Masterclass is your day one, a new financial reality, a new financial mindset, a new financial future. According to the National Financial Educators Council recent survey, U.S. adults lost an average of $1,200 in 2018 because they didn't know what they're doing with money. One out of five lost $2,500. It's like taking a stimulus check and setting it on fire. Only, 28, <clears throat> only 21 states make you take one class on money in high school. And of those that do, they only scratch the surface, like the topics, I don't know, like balancing the checkbook. Do you think that's enough? What percentage of schools teach sex ed, lacrosse, and broadcast journalism? Almost 50 out of 50. You can't make this stuff up. It, it makes no sense to us either. Most of our kids think a personal finance course would benefit them the most. It's hard to find one on your own. That's why we teach this master class and give you the book. Meet the sucker. <clears throat> Meet the sucker cycle. It's the trap of foolishly spending and low interest saving that goes on and on, month after month, year after year, slowing, sucking, slowly sucking, well, slowly sucking away your potential to be wealthy, free, and in control. Every couple of weeks, the cycle repeats. Extra trips to the grocer, unnecessary online purchases, another streaming subscription. Most people know how to earn money and spend it. That's it. What about the other options? It's time to break the sucker cycle. Suckers hand their paychecks to someone else who builds their own wealth with the sucker's money. Wait till you see what the numbers look like. Little amounts can add up over time and become big amounts. Check this snapshot out from the book. <clears throat> Check this snapshot out from the book. Some of these numbers might be a little different since we're all, we've all been staying home. Less on clothing, ride chairs, coffee and events, more on takeout subscriptions, and maybe even more alcohol. Think of your retirement like an airplane. It needs both wings to fly. Social Security and your 401k, if you have one, can make up one wing of the income you plan to live on in retirement. The other wing is completely up to you, your responsibility. If you hope to live on at least 70% of your pre-retirement income, you'll need to be serious about what you put away. Your financial professional can help you decide what that number is and where to put it. I'm in conversations like that every day. Let's take a look at how Americans are doing with their second wing. No matter what generation you are a part of, none of them are saving enough. Remember, the older you are, the less time you have, so you'll need to put more away. Here's an example that will shine a bright light on the numbers and the possibility of saving shortfall. If you put, don't put enough aside each month, at a good enough rate of return, your savings can fall short, putting your retirement income and lifestyle at risk. Depending on your shortfall, you might have to re-enter the workforce, cut back your lifestyle to live on less, or move in with your kids. How does that sound? See the shortfall? The gray area there between what you've saved and how much you need, it should be the focus of everyone and their financial professional to close this gap. Here's what it looks like when you nail it. Gap closed. Retirement savings goal reached. The person will have a reliable income because they saved the amount necessary and got the rate of return necessary to reach the savings required to make the retirement they imagine possible. There could even be money left over to leave a legacy to your children. How does that sound? You can work with your financial professional to figure out what your numbers need to be. As Steve Siebold said in his book, How Rich People Think, the wealthy think differently than everyone else. 
suckers accept their situation. They, their thoughts about money center on fear. Their behavior around money centers on foolishness. The wealthy, facing the same reality, choose an alternate mindset. They see money and their future differently. They see money uh, as gathering this. Uh, uh, they, they, they see money and their future differently. Gathering as much knowledge available, they think about money with excitement. They see a bright future, one filled with wealth and opportunity. Let's spend a few minutes learning about the power of compound interest. Albert Einstein said this was the most powerful force he had ever discovered. Compounding is the interest that interest can earn in addition to the interest your savings can earn, or interest on interest, as Zoe puts it. Compound interest leverages the power of exponential growth. This amazing story from the book is about John D. Rockefeller, one of America's self-made billionaires. I'll tell you the short version. Rockefeller lent $50 to a farmer at 7% when he was a boy. He earned $3.50 in interest on, in addition to getting the amount he lent back. During that same time, he earned $1.12 digging potatoes for three days. He looked at the $1.12 he earned from the back-breaking work versus the three fifty he his money earned for him. That's when he decided to make his money work harder than he ever could. This is a lesson to never forget. You decide. You work for your money, limited by time, or your money works for you around the clock without limit and without you. Rockefeller went on to say he had ways of making money most people had no idea about. We're about to let you in on his secrets. The difference between simple and compound interest is substantial. One stays the same and one grows and grows. See the difference? We'll look at two different examples of $1,500 growing at 9% over 50 years. With simple interest, the $1,500 grows to $8,250. Not really much over a long time. With compound interest, the same $1,500 grows to $132,000 plus in the same number of years, 16 times more money. Notice how the graph, how the curve of the graph gets steeper in the later years as the power of compounding really takes off. Mr. Einstein also said, compound interest is the greatest mathematical discovery of all time. He obviously thought a lot about many things in his lifetime, and he put the power of compound interest right up there with E is equal to MC squared. Here's an example of how saving monthly with compound interest can be a game changer. The interest ends up being way more than the amount you save. The interest in this example is 13 times what you saved alone. Here you see Rockefeller's secret reveal. Interest earning interest creating wealth that your savings alone can't accomplish. Now that you've started to get the hang of this, you might have a pretty good a guess whether $50,000 one time or $500 each month becomes more over 45 years. Both accounts earn 9%. Which do you think will earn more? $500 per month ends up outpacing the one-time sum of $50,000. Even though TJ saved more over time, his account passed Sarah's, in this example, after only 17 years. The tortoise beat the hare. Slow and steady can win the race. The return you get can make a big difference on how this story turns out. Watch what I mean. $178 saved each month from ages 25 to 67 and different returns creates very different results. Most people don't understand this, which explains why they choose unfortunate places to save their money. The amount per month and the time are the same. The only change is the rate of return. This could mean as much as almost 800% more money at 9% versus 1%. That's almost a $900,000 difference. As you can see, your rate of return could be the defining factor that closes your retirement savings gap or leaves you with a significant shortfall. Focusing on safety alone and ignoring rate of return can be a costly mistake. 
wealthy people want their money to work for them as hard as they did for it. We've all been guilty of squandering time. It's especially costly when you lose the value of money over that time. You never get the time back or the money lost. Time is one of the most precious commodities. How long do you have until you pay off your car or your home? Or to send your kids to college? Or to retire? Or possibly to run out of money before you die? You need to know your numbers. Why? Because it forces us to value the time we have. There are three ways to leverage the time value of money. Start now, save regularly, and be patient. Starting earlier is always a good idea. Yesterday is better than today. It makes a significant difference. In this case, savings from age 22 to 30 is better than from ages 30 to 67. 110,000 plus better after putting away 4.75 times less money. This is common sense principle. This is a common sense principle to understand that is frequently ignored. The longer you wait, the more you have to save to hit your goal. Don't wait. Here's a picture of the numbers that breaks it down by age. For each million you want to retire at for each million you want to retire at, you want at retirement, you can see the monthly amount you need to save to hit it. At age 30, you need to save $282 a month to have a million dollars at retirement. But if you wait until age 40, you need to save $731 per month. At some point, you will outpace your ability to hit the monthly savings amount required. You simply can't afford it. At that point, you'll have two choices, shrink your dreams, or find a way to earn more money. Now might be a good time to start applying these principles for yourself and see what that looks like. Write down your age and how much you need to save for the previous slide. What happens if you wait five years? How fast has the last five years flown by? Everyone needs to know this information now because time is ticking away. And here's that last slide. Sucker-minded people never think it's a good time to take care of this. The wealthy-minded always get, a, get started as soon as they can, which is now, if not sooner. Now, let's look at an example of something most people dream about. If you have children, or plan to have children, you always want them to have it better than you. That's natural. This example is a reimagining of how parents can leave a legacy for their kids. It's a strategy that applies the power of compound interest and the time value of money in a way that makes the traditional end-of-life wealth transfer seem old. Only 20% of children will receive an inheritance. It's probably even lower now that so many people have faced the challenges of the first half of 2020. If you want to give your children $1 million at their retirement, which is more likely? You either give them each a million in cash when they're adults and you've saved enough, or you develop a plan to save a fraction of that amount for each child when they're young. We know how hard it is for retirement age parents to preserve an inheritance for adult children. With seniors living longer, almost all of their savings may be required to cover decades of expenses, including medical bills and long-term care. This new reality of longevity can remove the possibility of leaving an inheritance the old way. Since it's so hard to leave an inheritance today, why not use the greatest financial asset your child has, time? They have an entire life of it. What could the power of compounding do for your child over 67 years? Let's take a look. Billion Dollar Baby leverages three simple money concepts, the power of compound interest, the time value of money, and wealth protection. This is one of my favorite quotes. Quotes. Nelson Henderson said, the true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you do not expect to sit. So could you use the money principles you've learned today to save a million for your child or grandchildren? It's easier than you think. 
The following examples are simply to illustrate how this can work. In this example, Dana puts $13,000 aside one time and leaves it there for her daughter's birth until her daughter turns 67. It grows at 6.5% to a little over $1 million. If Dana waits until her daughter graduates from high school, her daughter only receives about $300,000 when she turns 67. What a difference 18 years can make. Hector doesn't have $13,000 sitting around, but he still wants his son to retire with a million dollars. He and his relatives can work together to save just $2,500 now, and then just $250 each month for the next four years. Then, like magic, they'll hit that goal too. His son also retires with $1 million waiting for him. If Hector waits until his son turns 18, it's the same story that Dana had waited, much less, a little over 300000 again. We're developing a calculator that will allow you to play with the numbers to see what it might look like. In the meantime, your financial professional can help you decide. 250 children are born every minute, could live a different life if their parents or grandparents did this for them when they were young. Now you see why we call this strategy Million Dollar Baby. How appreciative would your kids be today, or one day, perhaps when they're gone, when you're gone, that their parents thought about their future, knew how money works, and acted in love to take care of them. That's a thank you that could change your legacy forever. Once again, sucker-minded people leave it all to chance, while the wealthy-minded realize that a dream come true, it would be to do that for their families. Are you having fun? We're closing in on the today's we're closing in on today's class. Now now's my favorite part. It's time to learn the rule of seventy two. Have any of you ever heard of it before? It's a little known mental math shortcut that the wealthy have used for years. Everyone should know it. You simply divide any interest rate into the number seventy two and it tells you how long it takes for money to double. It works for you if you save money. It works against you if you borrow money. At 1%, it takes 72 years for $1 to turn into $2. That's a long time. Would anyone knowingly choose that on purpose? Keep that question in mind. We'll, we'll come back to it. As you can see, the better rate of return you get, the faster your money can double. At, age, at 3%, every 24 years. At 6%, every 12 years. At 9%, every 8 years and at 12% every six years. Now that's more like it. Here's another way to look at it. In terms of the number of doubles you could have over your lifetime, at 1% you'll be lucky if you live long enough to get one. At 6% you can have four doubles, and at 12% it could be as many as eight. Each double is twice the money. Every double counts. Remember the question about 1%? Would you choose 72 years to double? Oh, yeah. Because people don't know how money works, there's almost $10 trillion sitting in passbook savings accounts that average 0.1%. That's just a fraction of 10%. When CNBC did a review of our book a few months ago, this is one of the things they pointed out to be the most unbelievable. If you divide 0.1 into 72, you're looking at 720 years for your account to double. By the year 2740, as George says, his great, 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 great grandchildren will love it. And just so we're clear, the same place that gives you a tenth of a percent can charge you 16% or more on a credit card. That means their money doubles every four and a half years or sooner. Now you see why the subtitle of the book is Stop Being a Sucker. You need to know how money works today, not tomorrow, today. Of course, the bank will give you a lollipop for your trouble waiting in line to make a deposit. What brand is it usually? Yep, a dum dum. You can't make this up. It's like they're telling you, but you just don't know the code. You can also use this figure to you can also use this to figure out what return you'll need for the savings goal or what a loan will cost you. 
this is not the time to be sucker minded. This is time to apply the rule of 72 to all your finances, just like wealthy minded people do. We're at the conclusion of today's course. The principles like you just learned will bring up questions like the ones you see on the screen here. Should you use a bank account? What are the other safe options? Should you refinance a loan at a lower rate? What can you do to help make more doubles possible? A financial professional is the best person to turn to for questions like these and others. We can discuss this with you individually at a later time. When we get together next time, Masterclass Part 2 will show you how to apply today's principles to your finances using a practical, straightforward action plan and products and services that will help you make it happen. We'll take you through the seven money milestones to help you chart your course along the way. Each milestone is important to complete the financial plan. The good news is you've already begun milestone one, financial education. You're becoming more financially illiterate and will hopefully be able to discuss your situation with a financial professional, which we strongly recommend. There are strategies and products with the benefits like those you see on the screen there. Make sure you ask about them. We'll also talk about the impact of taxes as you work on your personal plan. It's like punching, it's like punching driving directions into your phone. Two points of reference is all you need, where you are and where you want to go. Same is true to chart the course with your financial roadmap. The How Money Works Money Discovery in the book can help you take care of that. We look forward to seeing you the next time. Until then, please review what you learned today, tonight, by reading the book again and preparing to apply the knowledge of these principles to your finances. Financial literacy can be yours.